Welcome back to Mountain View Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Michael Law from Boise. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you like what you see here, please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss what's going on here at Mountain View. This week, I'd like to take a look at Drew Brees and the video that he released uh, preparing for National Bring Your Bible to School Day on October 3rd. Drew Brees filmed a video and released a video, uh, apparently working with Focus on the Family uh, to promote this Bring Your Bible to School Day. And it was a very short video, very positive video, uh, certainly not a controversial video. And in it, he gives his favorite verse. Let's take a look at it now and see what you think about it. Hey guys, Drew Brees here. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 2 Corinthians 5.7. For we live by faith, not by sight. So I want to encourage you to live out your faith on Bring Your Bible to School Day and share God's love with friends. You're not alone. And so, as you can see, this, this video is harmless. This video doesn't get into anything remotely controversial, and yet Drew Brees came under fire for it. Articles were written, people are over, all over YouTube and Twitter just, just criticizing him. How could he dare to come out and film a video about bringing your Bible to school? Wow, what kind of a country are we living in? Drew Brees didn't even come out and, and take a side doctrinally. He didn't take a side denominationally. He, he didn't take a side politically. He just said, hey, Whatever you believe about the Bible, it, I don't even think he uses the word Christian in that video. He just says, hey, let's bring your Bible to school, just encouraging kids. And the implication is, hey kids, if you're a Christian, you're not alone. I'm Drew Brees, I'm a celebrity, I'm a football player, you know my name and I'm a Christian too. And I encourage you to bring your Bible, you're not alone, I'm with you. There's more of us out here than you might realize, so be bold about your faith. But a lot of the the information is sort of unnamed, it's, it's implied. So he comes under fire and releases this second response video. Hello everyone, there's been a lot of negativity spread about me in the LGBTQ community um, recently based upon a article that someone wrote with a very negative headline that um, I think led people to believe that somehow I was aligned with an organization that was uh, anti LGBTQ um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, I'd like to set the record straight. Um, I live by two very simple Christian fundamentals, and that is love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. I think the first one is very self-explanatory. The second one, love your neighbor as yourself. What does that mean to me? That means love all, respect all, and accept all. So that is actually how I live my life. That is what I try to do with my family, with my teammates, with uh, people in my community, with my friends, all people, no matter your race, your color, your religious preference, your uh, sexual orientation, um, your political beliefs, it doesn't matter. So the fact that these rumors um, have been spread about me are completely untrue. What I did was I filmed a video recently um, that was encouraging kids to bring their Bibles to school for National Bring Your Bible to School Day. To bring your Bibles to school to be able to live out your faith with confidence. And I even gave one of my favorite Bible verses. It was as simple as that. So I'm not sure why the negativity spread or why people tried to rope me into certain negativity. I do not support any groups that discriminate um, or that have their own uh, agendas that are trying to um, uh, promote inequality, okay? So hopefully that has set the record straight uh, and we can all move on because that's not what I stand for. Uh, have a great day. And so it is the response video that I really want to take a look at. In the response video, he not only uh, sort of riles up unbelievers and atheists and people who are God haters and church haters and Christian haters, but in the response video, he riled up the attention of the church community and Christians in the United States and no doubt in the world at large. And let's just go through the video sort of point by point and let us think about it. Let, let us take a pause 
and, and, and really think before we criticize. And I'm not saying Drew Brees is above criticism, but I, I think perhaps he is being treated a bit unfairly by the Christian community. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't discuss these things pro and con. I, I just think we need to be careful to keep the context in mind before we maybe go a little too far in our criticisms. So first of all, he comes out and he says, look, I'm not aligned with any organization that has sort of an anti-LGBTQ, uh, uh, an anti-stance against that community. Okay, well, I don't suppose necessarily as Christians, we, we need to busy ourselves with being against the whole agenda of the LGBTQ community. I, I'm all for uh, being busy about the gospel and allowing the work of the Holy Spirit affect whom he may. You know, Jesus said, hey, uh, the Spirit, you see his effects, but you don't always know where he's going and what he's up to. Like the wind blows. You, you can see the effect of the wind, but you can't see the wind itself. And Jesus said, look, a man must be born again. And this new birth is something that is strictly up to the prerogative of the Holy Spirit who blows through what life he wills, if I can put it that way, following the wind analogy. So I don't think I need Drew Brees to be outright publicly uh, moving forward against the LGBT community. I think I'm fine with his comments. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not out here to attack people, to come against people. I have my beliefs, but sort of I keep those personal. So I, I, don't, think I, have a necess I don't think I necessarily have a problem with that. Does that mean as churches we should embrace the agenda of the LGBTQ community? Absolutely not. We embrace the agenda of Christ. We embrace the truth of God's word and we move forward from there. If we come to a head against any community, it doesn't matter which community it is, then let the chips fall where they may. We must be true to God's word. Next, he says, I live by the great commandments. Love the Lord God with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I really found that beautiful. I, I was moved to see somebody express that in a public setting. Somebody like Drew Brees to put his faith in sort of the context of Christ because Jesus is the one who said, hey, all the law and the prophets, they hang on this. Love God and love your neighbor. So I, I, I'm with Drew Brees right there. His next comments which follow after that, how he applies that is what got him in some trouble with fellow Christians where he says, hey, look, I accept everybody. That's how I interpret this. Love your neighbor means accept your neighbor. I accept all. And he goes on the long list, long laundry list of which the LGBTQ was a part. But he says, look, it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, I accept you. As Christians, is this how we interpret God's love? Is this how we interpret the love God wants us to have for other people? Is it true that love means I must accept your sin? Because whether you vote Republican or Democrat is quite a bit different than whether you are living in a homosexual lifestyle. See, the Bible doesn't address whether you should vote Republican or Democrat. The Bible does address how you should live your life, how you, how you should, how you should uh, interpret human sexuality. The, the Bible has a lot to say about that. So it's dangerous when we start saying, look, when I say love, when I say I believe that I should love my neighbor, it means I should accept my neighbor. And I, I, I think it's just that those semantics right there that are, are getting Christians to say, look, is this really what it means to love my neighbor, to condone and accept and embrace their sin. I, I think we would look at it as speaking the truth in love. Yes, to love my neighbor, it doesn't mean to hide the truth from him, but to speak the truth to him in love. Now, I'm not saying that every 
single person we meet on the street, we should stop them and ask them what kind of sin they might be involved in and speak the truth to them in love. But in those places where we have relationship, where we have communication, and where we understand that somebody is living in sin, and it doesn't have to be one of the LGBTQ sins, it, it could be any number of sins, but when it comes to our attention, and they're sort of in our sphere of influence, well, I think the Bible would say the onus is on us. We have a responsibility before God and before our neighbor to speak God's truth to them, albeit in love. And hey, if they don't receive it, that's between them and God. But if they do receive it, then the Bible says we have won our brother. So I think that's really at the crux of some of the the. the feedback or what's the the feed lash lash back what's the <laughs> backlash there it is <laughs> i think the backlash is really due to that one line right there and before i move on here's why that doesn't bother me so much coming from drew Brees. now if my pastor from the pulpit is interpreting scripture like that i i think i need to take a more pronounced stance against it when it's Drew Brees, who has, as far as I know, never said, hey, I'm Pastor Drew. Hey, I'm Evangelist Brees. When it's, when it's just one of the people in the congregation of God, I, I don't think I need them to get everything right. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but he's a celebrity, and he's a this, and he's a that, and he has this uh, massive influence, and people listen to him. That may be true, but Drew Brees signed up to play football. He didn't sign up to proclaim the truth of God. He didn't go to seminary. He, he, he didn't uh, give himself over to, the, uh, to learning God's word in such a way that he could teach its truths in exactly the proper manner. Drew Brees wants everybody to know, look, I'm a Christian, and being a Christian doesn't make me evil. It actually makes me good. Being a Christian doesn't make me a bigot. It creates in me a heart of love towards people I wouldn't have loved in the first place. And this is really where atheists and the LGBTQ community and, and, and other boisterous unbelievers really get it wrong. They think because we believe that there is right and wrong and that there is sin and righteousness that we're holier than thou and that we're judging them. No, to preach the gospel to sinners in the Christian community through the Christian filter, with our worldview, preaching the gospel to sinners is the greatest act of love that, that we could ever perform on behalf of another person. Because we believe the gospel saves, the gospel redeems, the gospel uh, regenerates. We believe in the power of the gospel, and we're not ashamed of that power. We're not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ because we know what he's done in our life, and people might pick on us and say, well, yeah, but you don't look that good to me. Hey, but we know ourselves and we know what you don't know. And we know what the Lord has done within us. And it is this um, love for others that causes us to say, look, we need to share our faith with others because others need what we have received. So Drew Brees, he's not Pastor Drew. He doesn't have to get everything right and perfect. And I think we can have grace here. And yet at the same time, I think we can identify with his message where he's trying to show in a public way that Christians aren't the bigots that everybody tries to make us out to be these days, especially the LGBTQ community. So anyways, he films this video for the National Bring Your Bible to School Day. It's on October 3rd, and I hope we can all jump on the Drew Brees bandwagon we can all share the hashtag, bring your Bible to school, and that we can support what he's doing because I think more than our criticism, he needs our understanding, he needs our graciousness, and he needs our support because for the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a Christian in the public setting. I, I think, okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I think he is really um, carrying the name of Christ in a way that is dignified, that is full of integrity, um, and, and that is something I can be proud of as a fellow Christian. Our, if I'm holding Drew Brees to a certain standard where I say, if you're not perfect, I won't support you, 
well then I don't know any one of us that are ever going to receive the support we need because none of us are perfect. None of us say the right things in just the right way. We're not perfect. Drew Brees isn't perfect, but he is out there on the front public lines taking flack. And I think us Christians would do well to be on his side and maybe take a couple of those bullets for him. So Drew Brees, I think, needs our prayer and our support. Tune in next week for another episode from Mountain View Baptist Church. We're here at 1960 South Euclid Avenue in the city of Ontario, California. If you're in the area, stop by, pay us a visit, say hi. If you're not in the area, hey, make sure you're, you're in your church. If you don't have a church, find a church. Be involved in the kingdom of God. Seek first his kingdom and above all else, make your calling and election sure.